hi everyone welcome back to my channel so for today we're going to make a slimline card um, using some lawn fawn products some mama elephant product um, stamps and dyes um, and ones that i've not used yet so i still have to figure out where i'm going <laughs> with them um, and how things fit on but we'll work it out um, so to start with and i've got just a piece of paper here um, i thought i'd give this a whirl i know jessica Frost Ballas, if I've said her name right, she does that a lot. She uses uh, Wizzy Ink Blends over a piece of paper, um, just like scrap paper. Um, so I thought I'd try it. It's just a little easier with the clean up. So, um, and I have some Bristol Smooth for my sky, or what will be my sky. And I'm going to start with Squeeze Lemonade and a makeup blending brush, or a, you can use one of the craft ones as well. And I'm pretty sure that the because I prepped this so long ago, I'm pretty sure that the dye from um, the top piece from Mama Elephant, I'm pretty sure that's actually cut out of like 110 Nina. Because the blend on it is not very good, you'll see that later, but it won't make any difference, honestly. Um, and then I'm going to take some frosted, uh, fossilized amber and um, add that next layer of colour to the uh, Bristol Smooth. This is definitely Bristol Smooth because I did this on the day I actually started making the card. <laughs> so I remembered that one. Um, and I'm pretty sure there was something in the other blending brush because maybe I need to wash them because it just looks like there's a weird hint of something. I don't know, black or brown, I don't know. I try and keep my colours the same colours with the brushes as I go. And then Spice Marmalade for the top piece, um, top section, sorry. Um, and I will go back and forth between each of those colours. So taking the fossilised amber brush again, not adding any extra ink, just helping the blend. And then I've got that blended enough that um, I can then get some water spritzed on it with a distress sprayer. And then I just use paper towel to mop up excess water and it just gives it a bit of texture in the background. It's very cool. And then put that off to one side to dry. And then I'm going to just flip this piece of paper over. I didn't know if it would transfer, but it's oxide ink and oxide ink stays wet a lot longer than even the distress inks do. So I, um, yeah, wasn't sure. So I thought I'd uh, just turn it over. So now I'm going to start with some, I think I start with the gathered twigs actually. And then I move on to the walnut stain for the trees. And I didn't want to do a full mask, so I just used my paper towel as a guide. Um, and what I also could have done, <laughs> and I realised this after I started inking, of course, um, is that I could have kept the trees t within that sort of frame if I wanted to. But actually, in the end, I actually quite like how it turned out. It looks better just using the whole piece rather than trying to frame it off. But you could you could do that. Um, and then taking both of them just to both those colors and just sort of blending within each other um, I used the paper towel near the bottom so that I could kind of mask in inverted commas <laughs> So that I didn't get too much of the brown on the bottom half of it, which is going to be in the green And I wanted this sort of like daytime autumn feel about it um, so that's why the sky is not a typical sort of, it's not blue and it's not sort of that icy like you would get in winter, but it's also not that spring summer kind of look either. Um, when I went to do the, <laughs> this part of the, uh, the, the faux masking, um, the pretend masking, shall we say, um, it actually left some lines so uh, from that piece of cardstock. So that's just something to bear in mind when you're using blender brushes or any any blender tool um, is that you will land up with lines you wouldn't think you would but you you do quite easily as it turns out so I just blended the green up into the brown and I actually really really love how that turned out it just looks like I don't know I just love it it just looks so nice so um, and that was just a happy accident <laughs> because I was fixing something else so for the um, I'm using that card just between the like the tops of the hillsides, which is where I then used the um, rustic wilderness. The mowed lawn was the main green. Um, I don't think I mentioned that. And then of course spritzing again for extra texture. Now the, the, 
the blend's not particularly good in the sort of middle there and that's what makes me think this might have been 110 pound Nina cardstock instead um, but it's fine so I'm going to put the acorn house together now and um, you'll see I, I have issues with my glue and then I lose a load of footage so <laughs> you'll just have to excuse this but basically what I'm doing is putting the house together um, this is the first time I'm putting it together as well so you know I realize there's some areas I don't need glue on it like the top of the uh, little acorn but when I do these things I always put my camera on because I figure if it's the first time I'm doing it I want to show you that even though it's the first time it's easy to put these things together um, Lawn Fawn obviously with theirs and Mama Elephant they do fabulous videos on like introduction videos and things so you can always check them out and that's probably what I should have done before I did this but I didn't um, for the door I actually closed it off with a bit of um, washi tape and then used a piece of yellow cardstock so that it looks like it's got a bit of glow from the inside like the lights are on sort of thing um, and then just lining up the bottom pieces like the little steps for the house um, and it's just really cute and then this is like the uh, what do they call that I want to say like a loft window <laughs> I don't know <laughs> can't remember the name of it um, there is a name for that isn't there anyway it's upstairs um, and that actually cuts a piece a solid piece and a um, frame for the window so I, I already had the little glow for the inside of the house as well and then adding on this cute little thing that goes on the top or wherever you want but on I put it on the top of the acorn I think it's so sweet it's just like an extra bit of detail and there is like a little flower die that you cut out um, to go on there and I actually cut it out in two different shades so that I could then add um, it going in a different direction so there's just a bit more up top there and um, I will put on the very tiny <laughs> keyhole and then as my camera's going to die as I start to or I lose the footage I can't remember what happened now um, when I start to put the flowers on so you will see that in a bit but I die cut a whole bunch of the, the like sprigs and flower tops and leaves and all that sort of thing and I start to put them on um, in hindsight I should have put the stems on first and then the leaves but it's fine it works out fine in the end <laughs> and you'll see them in them in a minute um so <laughs> obviously there was a whole lot of stuff i also lost because <laughs> i actually put the card um layers together and then got my sentiment which says i've carved out some time to say you're the pick of the patch and i thought that was really cute so um that's from the pick of the patch lawn fawn stamp set and so are the pumpkins and the little squirrels which I colored off screen anyway they just it takes a long time for me to color things like that especially pumpkins I'm very chuffed with these pumpkins because I got a bit of um, like a flicking technique going and so the color looks it looks really cool I think um, for me <laughs> so I'm not the best color but I love coloring and so you can see the the, the flowers on the side of the house now um, they're all there's loads of them on there there's just tons of it and I've still got loads of it left as well so the best bit about this is that for me this part of the card is putting everything together it's kind of like creating your own little story um, which I love so <laughs> so that's what I'm sort of putting together now um, so you've got one little squirrel who's decided that he's going to be the in charge must be the boy he's in charge of cutting up the pumpkin and then like the mama squirrels come over and she's gonna do something with it I don't know what she's gonna do with it but you know she's got her spoon but it does look like he's he's out for revenge or something <laughs> it's like carnage with the um, pumpkin um, and obviously the innards of the pumpkin are sticking out <laughs> all over the floor so anyway so the card base is um, Calypso Coral Stampin' Up cardstock and that cardstock is i use that because it coordinates with the some of the flowers that i'd cut out um, when i was doing all the prep a lot of the die cuts i have a load of scrap 
card stock so I don't necessarily know all the time what company makes it because I've got a bit of a mixture going on but normally it will be um, Stampin' Up or Gina K or Lawn Fawn those are the three main companies that I use their card stock I've also got some Concord and Ninth that I do use now as well um, but it's for the most part those are the those are the companies that I would use if you need to know colors but I have a lot of scrap pieces and these tiny bits of, like tiny flowers and things they're great when you've got little scraps so yeah I don't always know <laughs> what they what they are and um, for these two squirrels in front of the house I decided to add some dimension to them because of all the layers of cardstock from the flowers it actually worked out really well they're actually lying quite flat now um, and then I totally forgot that I'd stamped and colored <laughs> All these leaves, um, these like autumn leaves, they're from the Jump for Joy Lawn Fawn set, set and um, they were meant to be somewhere in the background as well, <laughs> but that didn't work out. And then I also, these are all the leftover pieces from what I die cut, because I always say die cut more than you think you're going to need, um, because you may just want to use extras somewhere. Um, and in the end, those tiny little um, autumn leaves were perfect just as an extra little something in the background um, I just thought it made it work so so nicely um, I probably could have had something in the tree on the right hand side but in a way it's quite nice that I've left it because it just adds a bit of open space on the card there's a lot going on at the bottom and the left of the card so for the um, windows I'm going to use uh, and some of the flowers I'm going to use some um, Crystal Glaze by Nouveau. Um, I was going to use Glossy Accent, but it was blocked again. So, but anything like that where it's going to give a bit of shine. And then for the centers of the sort of main flowers, um, I'm going, oh, and also on the spoon and the knife, <laughs> had to be shiny. Um, could have cut those out in some silver as well. That would be quite cool if you had the coordinating dies. Anyway, and then the... Um, centers of the flowers i've used some crystal glitter drops uh, nouveau drops in a gold because i thought that tied in it was a nice shade of gold that tied in with the whole autumn feel um i thought anyway <laughs> so i think that's it that's pretty much it that's the card so yes it's again there's there's a lot of detail on it but it's so much fun to do this kind of card i love die cut cards i love stamps and die cuts together um and i love them when they sort of just stamps or just die cuts if that makes any sense <laughs> so i hope you've enjoyed this guys and um i hope you give this sort of scenery thing a go and it it genuinely if you have the right tools it makes such a difference but there are ways around things so um yeah so i hope you've enjoyed this guys and i will see you in the next one bye